and then watch what he does with his legs. This is conscious, okay? This is faking body language because obviously he is an actor. I understand this. But this is faking body language that you guys should get used to at the start. Watch this. Top these gals, I wouldn't trust them. They're probably crooked. Okay, so look at his legs. He's put them close together. Now watch this. He realizes this not really in his character's nature. Doesn't really look too good. Watch this. But, uh, I reckon seven tons. Got it? See how he went wider twice? So we went wider once and then he went wider again. Look at the difference now. I'll show you guys again. He makes two shuffles. Let's go from here. Probably crooked. Okay, so we've got him here. This is where this is where he's chosen to stand, okay? This is what he's decided to do. So this is his unconscious brain deciding this. Then suddenly your body language brain needs to say, hey, this doesn't look too good. But uh one shuffle. I reckon seven tons. Got it? Two shuffles, okay? And now we have this completely new stance where it looks fantastic. Wide legs makes you look a lot more dominant and, you know, clearly more aggressive. Hello guys and welcome back. In this video we're going to be doing a breakdown of Arthur Shelby and how he uses aggression effectively. The other thing we're going to use in this video is we're going to use Tommy as a reference so we can see the difference between the two. I think it would be quite interesting to look at. But let's crack on with the first clip. Okay, so we can already see he's made his presence known, so first thing he's done is he's come into the room, he's the loudest guy in there, he's talking openly, and then he's bumped into the back of Michael. Okay, I forgot his name for a second then. Now, just before we do really get into this, guys, I'm not saying to be a dick, I'm not saying to be aggressive to everybody, I'm just saying that aggression can be used effectively in certain scenarios. Now, if I was to make my own custom video, of course, I could do something very specific and show you a scenario, but, you know, we're just breaking down an iconic character. I haven't written the script, I haven't told him what to do, I'm just breaking down what I see, okay, so none of those comments. But straight away we can see he's asserted his dominance, there's about 15 people in the room, he's already the main man in the room, he's taking it over, he talks louder than everybody else, he struts in, and obviously like I said he's bumped into Michael there, he's trying to make his presence known. You bearing up Arthur? Bearing up for what? Bearing up to be free, Paul. We can see here, okay, this isn't the closest that he's been in this scenario. Uh, let's use yellow because it's a dark room, but we can see how close he gets to people when he's talking to them. Okay, it's a very dominant move. He's entering their comfort zone and the beaming eye contact that he has there as well. He's really leaning in. His hand is really close to her as well, which is very, very effective to be dominant and aggressive. Another glass, eh? Another glass of so what? We can see how wide he was there when he sat down. Look at this, guys. What? There. Look at that. Look at the width there. And this isn't the maximum. I've uh, I've paused this at the slightly wrong moment, but we can see there how much space he's taking up. He's the loudest guy in the room. He's slamming into his chair when he's sitting down. It's complete opposite to Tommy, who would do things slowly. But there's more than one way to get to the end goal, which is to be, you know, the most dominant man in the room, to have the best body language in the room. Well, this is Arthur's strategy, and it involves a lot of aggression. And this is why I wanted to make this video, because I believe that male aggression is being dampened, and it's being blamed for a lot of things. But I personally think that it can be very, very effective when used correctly. And I think there's a lot of scenarios in life where male aggression is still warranted and it can prevent you from being a pushover. Can you see how everything that he does is over-exaggerated, okay? Everything is, uh, is an over-exaggerated movement. Instead of the hand just going outwards, the elbow comes out as well. He slams into his chair, the way he walks, which we'll look at later. Everything is an over-exaggerated movement. Yeah, 
See how when Tommy walks in, everybody's demeanor changes. They know that the boss has arrived. First of all, an apology from Lizzie. She can't be here. Charles is a, a violin concert. Also, a welcome to Mr. Abarama Gold. He and Polly are to be married in three weeks with my blessing. From now on, Abarama will be welcome at our meetings. Again, we can see it here. Look at this. Okay, it doesn't seem like a lot, but everybody else is just kind of smiling and looking around. He's raising his glass to a, to a head height, okay? And uh, everything, like I said, is an exaggerated movement, so he's the first to initiate things, and we can see that here, or at least hear that here on the next scene. Hopefully, under happier circumstances. Let's drink to happier circumstances. Yeah. Right. To Ida. And there it is, okay? So, we've obviously got the drink up in the air again, like I showed you guys earlier, okay? This is raised up in the air. The, the reason why I'm showing you this is because a lot of guys operate within themselves. They won't move a lot, they'll kind of sit still, and there, there, there is the Tommy Shelby approach where you are an introvert. But if you are more of an extrovert, a high-energy guy, very active, a, a lot of, when a lot of women say they want an active guy, this is what they mean like a Conor McGregor type, well, that's exactly what we're seeing here with Arthur, okay? He's raising the glass up high, his hand is going upwards, he's not afraid to move outside of his comfort zone. You see a lot of guys will make gestures within their body, you know, they'll keep things close. He moves his arms out wide, he lifts, lifts the hand and the glass up high, and he's the first one to say to Ada, you know, he's initiated that and everybody's followed. And that's definitely a rule for life because there's so many people that are scared to do things like this. Like, we've all had a moment. I don't know whether it was when you were younger or what, but I've definitely had them when I was younger where you want to say something, like you maybe think of a joke or you want to say something and it goes to your head and your mouth wants to say it and then you just stop. You stop yourself before you say it and you hold it in and you think, no, I better not. You know, so I'm not really in the comfort zone to do that. I don't really run the room. Do I have the authority to speak? You know, it might run through your head when you were really young. As you get older, you get more confident. You know, there's still guys out there that have that lack of ability. But that's one thing you should really learn from Arthur. And that is 100% aggression. That's male aggression and masculinity coming out there. You know, everybody's just quite sullen and just kind of within themselves. And he shouts out, to Ada, you know, as loud as he can. He's the most dominant voice in the room. He's raising his glass. He's setting the tone. You know, a lot of people wouldn't do that. He's, like I said, he's setting the tone and he's um, he's initiating things. He's just doing whatever he thinks about doing, which is a fantastic trait. I think too many people are scared to do that. Right. To Ida. Ida. To Ada. Ida. And you see how everybody follows suit afterwards? That, that tends to happen. The person who leads the way, everybody seems to follow suit. And that's why it really helps to have that, that masculinity, that male aggression to you know, pushing out into the world, pushing it out. And that's what that's what a man is. A man is a force. It's going forward. It's pushing out. It's never within themselves, okay? As a man, you should always be outspoken. You should speak with your chest voice. You should, you know, make open expressions. I think, I think that stuff really, really helps. <coughs> Item number two. An announcement regarding Michael. According to your own estimations... This new venture of the delivery and ship... See the difference with Tommy? How unreactive he is? He's just holding eye contact. He's just... His body isn't moving. He's, he, he's a thinker, okay? And that's what makes him so appealing to so many people. And the difference between him and Arthur is... If this was Arthur, he would have already stopped him and asked him what the fuck he's talking about. They're on the inside, not on the outside. And as a member of the new generation, I'm able to take that great burden off your weary shoulders. A new decade is coming. We can see there the difference in facial expressions, okay? So if we just slightly go back, look at that. That's menacing. He, he just wants it to kick off at any moment, okay? It's very aggressive. The sinister eyes, he's just staring at Michael. He just, he just wants to do something to change what's going on here. Whereas if we look at Tommy... Take that great burden off your weary shoulders. A new decade is coming. 
It's a lot more relaxed, okay? He's thinking, he's listening. And like I said to you guys before, both approaches work. There's more than one way to have good body language. Just depends what type of person you are. This is a lot more introverted. Arthur is the extrovert. He's more outspoken, he's more aggressive. You know, if he, he's probably a better fighter, you know, he's probably got a bigger and better frame, whereas Tommy is slight of frame. He's not the biggest man in the world. He can definitely handle himself, but he knows where his strengths lie. And that lies here in his head. He has the intelligence. And that's why body language has multiple formats. Whichever suits you, you've always got to play to your strengths. Tommy, you can still do the good work that deep down you want to do. Mom, you can get married and live in that big house. Arthur, you can be the man that Linda wants you to be. For Linda. The difference there as well, everybody else didn't respond, they kind of gestured within themselves with micro-expressions, but there's that masculine energy, that aggressive energy again from Arthur, and it comes out with fuck Linda. You know, he's, he wears his heart on his sleeve, he says what he's thinking, like I said again, there's, there's two approaches, but it just depends which one you prefer to use. At least read it with an open mind. So very strong eye contact here from Michael. He's challenging Tommy. If this was Arthur, he'd take two or three steps forward, get in his face, hold that same eye contact, and beat him back with aggression. The way that Tommy handles it is very intelligent. It's cold in here, Michael. <laughs> Tommy, the Americans want to deal with me. Item number three. Tell them the and then he moves it on, okay? So it's very passive-aggressive. He realizes he doesn't need to swing punches or get in somebody's face. He has all the power, and that's the way that Tommy handles things. Like I said, Arthur would be completely different, and we'll see a lot of that moving forward in this video. Tommy, he's bitten through the fucking rope. They've got him cornered, but they need help. Go and get him! <laughs> We can see the difference here with Arthur, the way he stood up aggressively. Michael knows what's coming, he knows the personality of Arthur. Look how close he gets here, guys, look. Let's barely draw a line, his nose is pretty much touching his face or his ear. You know, he's making sure that he can hear it, he's whispering in his ear aggressively, you know, it's making it personal to him. He's invaded his personal space, he's got extremely close. The difference there between Arthur and Tommy is unbelievable. You know, Tommy's just thrown the document into the fire and just played it off as kind of a passive-aggressive comical scenario. Whereas Arthur is straight up on his feet, no hesitation, right straight next to his face, as close as he can get. Look, grit in his teeth. You can see uh, the jaw is clenched here, but he's grit in his teeth. And uh, he's making sure that Michael knows that, you know, at any moment this could pop off. Okay, so here we've got our second scene. This is when the Billy Boy gets off the gets off the boat. No, sorry, he's off the boat, but Arthur's turning up on the boat. There's two different variants of this. And we can clearly see here the difference between Arthur and Tommy. The, the personality types are completely different, but both are very appealing. And I think this shows that this shows more than any, more than any clip or any scene that there are two ways to skin a cat. Okay, there's more than there's more than two ways, but in this scenario, there's two ways to skin a cat. You don't necessarily have to have aggressive body language. You don't necessarily have to be Tommy Shelby in every scenario. You, you you know, you could even mix it up and have a blend of the two. But I know that there's some introverts out there, there's some extroverts, you know, some body language traits don't appeal to certain people, okay? There's I show a video of Ragnar Lothbrook and some people are five foot four and skinny and they're like, I don't know if this will work for me. Well there's multiple different ways to get around things, okay? And here are two separate approaches, and this video, this clip really explains this. A relatively slow turn, I'd say it wasn't too quick, it was pretty medium. You know, he is a gangster at the end of the day, he does have to make sure he's not being attacked from the side. Once he knows who it is, he's, in, he's completely relaxed. A call from the black boy, and now will be here any minute. You can see the difference here in body language, okay? Tommy looking straight forward. Billy Boy, I'm just going to call him Billy Boy, can't remember his name. Looking at Tommy, okay? That's a power move. 
He's making him look at what he what Tommy's doing is making this guy look at him. Okay, it's a power move, saying I'm the important figure here. You have to look at me. I'm not going to show you my attention. I hear you agreed to give up the north. You can see here as well the difference. Tommy hasn't moved. We've got Billy Boy here moving excessively. He's shuffling. He's turning. We've got a perfect dynamic here where his shoulders are facing Tommy and Tommy's shoulders are facing the opposite direction and still facing completely forward. Again, that's a massive power shift. And I'd say as far as our boss is concerned, him being dead would be less of an obstacle than him being Jewish. I think... Billy Boy's movements are a lot more like Arthur's. You see the way he's shuffling around, he's over-exaggerating, like we would never see Tommy do this. Okay, that's a really expressive movement of the mouth, the lips, whatever you want to call it. Tommy would speak kind of within himself. He is somewhat of an introvert, whereas the Billy Boy is very outspoken. He's doing the, the Ragnar Lothbrok lean back, and Arthur's exactly the same. And that, like I said, there's two different ways to get to that dominant, aggressive, good body language kind of end goal. Well, brother of yours, one who let me a hand grenade. We see here, as soon as he's talking about his brother, see a lot of guys, let me just get this off the screen, there we go. A lot of guys, when somebody talks about them, they might look the other way, look down, they might not want to, you know, get involved. Immediately, Arthur's head just pricked to the sides. Look, he's already getting up onto his feet. His eyes are darting in this direction. You know, he's ready to go at any given moment. And I actually admire this as a trait. I'm not, I'm not encouraging people to get in fights and, you know start violence but if somebody's trying to start it with you if somebody's talking about you like that there's no reason why you should you know shuffle away and and back down i think there's a tommy approach where you can out intelligent them but still have good strong body language which tommy does but arthur straight up on his feet he's not having any of it you know he's too proud a man i, th I think this is a it's a lost trait i saw a video on youtube the other day where <laughs> some like geeky guy is dressed up as a nerd came into, he was in a library or something, he was talking, I can't remember what he was talking about, it was something to do with thug life, he was like, you don't know about thug life, and he was like pushing this guy around, and this guy was like, sorry, I've got no problem with you, please, like, just back off, I, are you serious, sorry, I'm so sorry, I, I was thinking, I would have just stood up and already smacked him in the mouth, like, I don't understand where this, where this kind of I'm sorry approach comes from, like somebody starting on you, you, you like even if you're the weakest man in the world, just still get up and have a go, you know, still get in his face and push back a bit. Like you've got to have some pride for yourself as a man, and that's what Arthur's very, very good at. You, we watch him here. He'd be the first that you tinker as I go for if our truth should end and the whistle blew. Good. He's in the mood for a quarrel. There he is, okay, on his feet, ready to go. You can see he's got the wide stance, okay. The elbow's out here. I know he's holding a gun, but it's quite an imposing figure. So is this in the background. This is a great way to sit. Is Isaiah, I think. His legs out wide, this, apart from the hands, which should be on the knees. But that's a very, very good posture from Isaiah as well. But look, you can see the wide legs. It's a pretty good stance. It looks like a strong individual, you know. It's somebody who's ready to go. He's looking straight at him. Strong eye contact. Tommy's still looking straight forward. This guy looking straight at him, okay. So we've got the extroverted, dominant, masculine, aggressive men, one and two. And we've got Tommy, the more introverted thinker. All have great body language. Well, a brush with a Titanic, Tom. And he's talking loud again as well. Listen to Tom. Listen to Tommy. Yeah, I heard. Not as loud, okay? There's a big difference. Tommy just kind of speaks, you know, at a, a level tone because he knows that people will listen to him. Arthur, everything is aggressive. Everything is said from the chest. Everything's said with passion. It's Like I say, it's very refreshing. I think that's why so many guys are drawn to these types of figures, like Alfie Solomons as well. For night. For no we can see in the background here, this is the Bjorn Ironside pose that I showed you guys before. Hands on the thighs, legs wide. It's a great way to stand, okay? When you stand like this and you do it in a slow motion, like his eyes there, it's a fantastic way to do it, okay? Just added bonus there. Noisy though. Do you see that, guys? This, watch this step here on this foot. Watch this. 
Watch how exaggerated this step is. And this is something that happens in the in the ape world, especially with gorillas, is they will strut around in a large space. So instead of just taking this route, you know, maybe come and stand in here or just walking straight around and standing here, he just struts around for a bit, takes up as much space as possible and ends up around about here, I believe. I've only watched this clip once. But gorillas will do that. They'll take up a lot more space. They will, you know, dominate an area. It's, it's a power move, okay? It shows dominance that you own this area, this area, this area, this area, and all of this. And also the uh, length of the stride. Watch this stride here. There. You see that, guys? Let's go back one more time. But that stride was enormous. It's a power move, okay? When you walk, you should walk with... Um, Heel to toe, okay? So you always put your heel down first. Apparently, although I do quite honestly believe it's true, but apparently they've done studies on it, and you can lengthen the distance of your stride, and it kind of shows long legs, it shows power, it shows a, a, a larger frame. That's kind of what it's trying to imitate. And when people do that, it looks it looks extremely dominant, okay? It's taking up as much space as possible, which I've shown you guys before is, is a great move if, if you're trying to be aggressive. <laughs> Look at that. Look, look, it's almost like a lunge. I think there was a bigger bit a minute ago. But look at the distance here. The knee is actually bent. It's almost like a lunge. I, I think he's over exaggerating a bit. Maybe because I've paused it. But you can't disagree when that was in full motion that it actually looked pretty good. Like these steps. Here. They all said I was mad to take me dad with me. Your dad, here's your dad. This is my fucking dad. Straight away with the aggression, okay, guys? Look, eye to eye, no problem with it at all. Clenched jaw, he's ready to go. Straight in his face, okay? Did it in a fast motion. This is the first time we've actually seen Tommy take note of what's going on over here. Obviously, he's thinking it could be a fight, but this is Arthur's kind of personality type. Doesn't like the guy. Well, he, well, he does actually support the guy, he says in a minute, but he knows that they're on opposing teams somewhat, not in this scenario, but he knows at some point these two are going to kick off, which I think will probably happen in season six. Um, but he's straight in his face, okay? No hesitations. Walk straight up to him. Maybe it was unprovoked, but, you know, the, these two do have something against each other. And uh, I'm not saying for you t you guys to do this, you know, and let if somebody gets in your face, like, this is the right thing to match them eye to eye. This is great. A lot of men, a lot of men here, this is a lesson I need to teach more men in the world. A lot of men here, if this guy got in his face, would maybe back up, would start looking down at the floor, be like, sorry, mate, the, the chin would be pointed down to the floor. But no, what the Billy Boy's done is the chin is parallel looking straight in his eyes, and look, both men have a slight smirk, because they're very confident in their abilities when it comes to fighting. Right here. He's, he's looked down at the floor there, but it's more of an aggressive thing, okay? It's not a submissive move, but I still wouldn't advise it, but he, he's quite a twitchy character. I think that's just in his nature. This is my fucking dad. Where's up at armor? He got off with Sully if he sees Billy Boy here, he'll cut his fucking throat. Tell the tanker he's welcome to come and try anything. Is it all aboard? Yeah. It's all there. We waited at the wharf. We used company scales. I wouldn't trust them. They're probably crooked. But, uh... See that, guys? There's two things there, okay? I, want, I really wanted to let that play. Watch when he's backing up. He's doing the, he's doing the shoulder roll that I showed you guys before by uh, Bjorn Ironside, but this time he's doing it backwards. Watch his shoulders as he walks back. It's all there. We waited at the wolf. We used co Reason being, he's taking exaggerated steps backwards, okay? It looks quite submissive to then, you know, if you've just done all this, to then shuffle slowly and, like, turn and show your back to him. You know, it just looks quite submissive. You, you guys get what I mean. Like a little shuffle with your feet and just be turning your toes slightly and just make your way back. Like these longer strides just fits his character better. And then watch what he does with his legs. This is conscious, okay? This is faking body language because obviously he is an actor. I understand this. But this is faking body language that you guys should get used to at the start. Watch this. Top these scales. I wouldn't trust them. They're probably crooked. Okay, so look at his legs. He's put them close together. Now watch this. He realizes this not really in his character's nature. Doesn't really look too good. Watch this. 
But uh, I reckon seven tons. Charlie? See how he went wider twice? So we went wider once and then he went wider again. Look at the difference now. I'll show you guys again. He makes two shuffles. Let's go from here. Probably crooked. Okay, so we've got him here. This is where this is where he's chosen to stand, okay? This is what he's decided to do. So this is his unconscious brain deciding this. Then suddenly your body language brain needs to say, hey, this doesn't look too good. But uh one shuffle. I reckon seven sons. Got it? Two shuffles, okay? And now we have this completely new stance where it looks fantastic. Wide legs, makes you look a lot more dominant and, you know, clearly more aggressive. Tommy's got it somewhat, but he's gone even wider than Tommy, we can see here, okay? And that's something that he's done, as you guys can see, he's done that consciously. He is acting, but you guys can do this in real life. You know, there will be scenarios where you sit or you stand or whatever, and you think to yourself, that didn't look too good. You know, you can just tell it doesn't look good, it doesn't feel right. Slightly adjust. You know, and before long, it will become completely natural to you. Hey! Put ten sacks of flour onto Mr. McCavan's boat. Come on. I see the difference there, guys? You see the um, mini steps here from Curly when he gets close? Watch this. To Mr. McCavan's boat. There. You, you see the little uh, stutter steps that he's doing? That's the difference between a guy who's dominant, masculine, and aggressive, and somebody who is a follower. Hey Arthur, someday, yes, you and me. Ah, oh, Tommy, hi. Okay, so that's very interesting. It's like I said, to you guys earlier. You know, he's, he's challenged him. He said the guy's name, Arthur. Someday, me and you, yes. There's no reason to not, you know, get in this kind of position. You know, the guy's challenged him, he's gone and held eye contact, he's got a bit closer, he's shown that he's not afraid, okay? I think more of this needs to exist in the modern world, rather than being like, well, I'm not really a fighter, you know, uh, I'm sorry I upset you. And even if you're the weakest guy in the world, like I said, just don't be disrespected, don't be treated like a clown in this world. Like, you, Don't be afraid to take a punch, you'll get, you know, knocked out or whatever, just... I just, I just think you just got to have some pride in your name, your family name, your your own personal name, you know, your assets, your home, whatever it might be. Don't let people push you around. Have some old school respect like they did back here in this era. Fascists. <laughs> Look at him. Again, like I said, he's not looking down submissively, he's looking him up and down. That's what he's doing there. It's a little bit different. McGregor does the same thing. They're both high-energy, twitchy guys. They struggle to do the Tommy Shelby thing where they can just hold eye contact the whole time. I fucking hate him. Always have done. But you... You, Billy Boy. Oh, you're special, are you? I fucking like him, Tommy. I like you. I don't... You're a man after me own heart. Someday, Mr. Shelby. Yeah. Someday. Yeah. The way that he's turned his shoulders as he's walked away here to keep that in a confrontational scenario. It's like a face-off, okay? That's what they were doing. He's kept that face-off kind of dynamic. He's not just turned straight back to Tommy. Okay, guys, so uh, we're going to move on to this next clip here. And I've paused it at this moment on purpose. Look at, look at, look at this over-exaggerative walk from Arthur. You know, look how much his arm is out. And his other arm. He's, the idea is to take up as much space as possible. And like I'm saying, guys, you don't have to do this down the street. People might think you're an idiot. This looks a lot more manageable, okay? Looks a lot more realistic, yet still dominant. But that's the whole idea is Arthur is supposed to be a hyperbole. He's supposed to be an over-the-top character. He's overly aggressive. He, he does what he wants. And you can see that here. It's like the McGregor walk. Catch. Go get you trying to I can do with it. Look, you can still see it there, okay? Wait. Go home. That's Tommy. He's, you know, a man of a few words. Just go home. And then listen to the difference between him and Arthur. Come here, you. Come here, you, okay? So it's two commands from both of them, but they're done in different ways. Tommy's is just go home. It was very relaxed, you know. But the assertive, more aggressive one coming out of Arthur's mouth. Come here, you. You know, it's a, it's a command. That's what it is. It's completely different. It's an it's, it's got an aggressive undertone. Put this on. Again, put this on. It's the exact same thing. 
There you go, look at that. It's right on you. Rap. See the way he uses a lot more words than Tommy? That's what I mean, there's two different approaches. Pop warm. We can see there as well, guys, the walk again. Very over exaggerative. Watch this. He's actually flicking his legs out, okay? It's very Conor McGregor esque. I think I can get it about here. Boom. There, you see the way he's flicking his knee out and then striding out as far as possible. It's like an old geezer kind of walk. Bike up. Rise and shine. What are you doing here? Wasting our fucking time on you. Okay, so, you know, wake up, rise and shine, but the way that he said that is very aggressive, it's very assertive again, it's commanding. Whereas Tommy's the one who's actually saying something who, which is aggressive, you know, wasting our fucking time on you. But the way that he said it in that controlled, low, kind of monotone, it just creates two different demeanors. And that's the difference between these two brothers, is that Tommy is the more, like I said, intelligent, relaxed one. He's got that introverted kind of body language. Well, not introverted body language, but introverted persona. His body language is still very dominant in the majority of scenarios, but he's just very unreactive. And that comes through in his speech too. Sit down, Finn. Sit down. It's probably the first time we've seen Tommy be more like Arthur there, overly aggressive. And he has to has that he has to have that trait, of course, in the profession that he's in. See how much slower that Tommy walks. Arthur's a Arthur doesn't walk too quickly, but everything's like I said, over exaggerative. It looks a little bit more stuttery. Whereas Tommy's holding eye contact the entire time and he's moving very, very slowly. There's a clear difference between the two. All I have to do is to make you fucking listen to me. Took a bullet. Look at that pose there, guys. It's a very dominant, aggressive pose. He's holding eye contact for one, but look at the distance he's covering there. He's covering, what, three seats there? This is a fantastic way to sit if you ever get the space to do it. I, th I think it looks great. I think it's very assertive, it's very dominant, it has an aggressive undertone if that's what you want to go for, but at the same time, if you do this in the right way, in the right scenarios, it can just be dominant on its own, you know, and you could still be a decent bloke. Been run around the streets with a fucking gun in The posture here he's taken up, now it's, it's not as assertive, as, uh, or it's not as aggressive, but he has put an arm here where he's set, he's lent in. He's closing up that personal space. There's a hand on the hip, which actually signifies aggression, okay? But you don't get the impression that he's going to hit him or, you know, hurt him at any given moment, whereas Arthur, you do with his body language. I think it definitely comes from Tommy's tone. Tommy's tone is very it's very personal. It's whispered. It's monotone. It's kept quite low. It's, you know, it's consistent. He doesn't get aggressive. He doesn't raise it. doesn't add any emphasis unless it's too... Um, Unless it's to a, like a single word which he drags down or drags out. That's the only way he really does it. Whereas Arthur increases his tone, increases the volume, increases the aggression, the speed of his speech too. Your hand. Somebody has to. Then we've got people for that kind of work. Soldiers. See what I mean? Raises his tone. It's completely different to what Tommy's doing. And he gritted his teeth when he said it too. That's what you are. So on your feet, soldier. Come on, on your feet. Okay, so he's tried once, normal tone. Next tone is more aggressive. And the next one is, you know, just do do as I say. I thought we just said I was a general. Oh, I did just say you were. So get on your fucking feet, Arthur. See how that's Arthur's immediate reaction, okay, to move in with the aggression. Sometimes it's required, whereas Tommy stepped in and said it's not, you know, needed in this scenario. And that's the two differentials between these two guys. Finn, Finn, look at this. This is the bullet that I've got armor gold. Now, Tommy's taking a more mental approach, okay? He's, he's, he's 
he's talking about the bullet that was in his body. So he's staying, he's trying to do it in a clever way. He's getting into his psyche. Whereas Arthur's approach is more aggression to put hands on the man and have no hesitation to do it. Aggression gets you places. Well, guess what? Both approaches actually work. It depends on the scenario. I don't think you go into a boardroom and be Arthur. But at the same time, I think I'd rather be Arthur when somebody's trying to get in your face on the street. See what I mean, guys? I think there's two different scenarios. There's different male types, and I think there's different scenarios in life where you can use a blend of both. You can get in somebody's face in a certain scenario, and then maybe in a boardroom, in a business deal, you can sit back, relax, and deploy the kind of more Tommy Shelby approach. Good from you, first and last. First and last. Still has strong dominant body language, though, as we can see. Strong eye contact pushing this into his personal space and taking up a lot of space with himself, okay? Because this is being forced towards him. Pointing is very aggressive. And the way that he's forcing it towards him with a pointed finger is close to his comfort zone, his personal space. I'd imagine if they turn the camera around, you know, he still has that side to him. But with the uh, the kind of more placid tone, it doesn't seem as aggressive. Last. Don't lose it. It's another command. Can't clean up. And a hand straight away in his personal zone. Look, it's pretty much around his throat, okay? Has no problem with doing that. And then watch this. Put some clothes on. Nice suit. See, it goes around the back of the neck here as well. So this is a massively dominant move. You usually see a, a kind of adult figure doing this to a child you know it's usually a term of endearment or something like that it can be aggressive as well you know but you can clearly see if you saw this image here you'd be like this is the boss this is the employee this is the dad this is the son that's the kind of image that it portrays and that is again aggressive aggressive but assertive body language there i've got some trouble that'll keep you out of trouble oh and uh, tom Yep. While you're there, um, I've met this girl and I'd like to get married. Fuck off. Go. It, again, they're using terms like fuck off, go. You know, they're very assertive. They, they would be considered rude in a lot of circles. But sometimes I think this, as a man, sometimes I think this is, this is granted. I think you should do this sometimes. And the way he, I think he hits him in the chest here lightly or in the stomach. Get dressed. You know, pushes him away. Again, there's, there's more aggression, it's more dominant body language, it's assertive. That's just kind of Arthur's style. Well, you, well, you wouldn't say it's, you know, it's out of order. Like I said, it's just an extroverted, aggressive man's style. Both have their place, but Tommy deals with this in another manner. Go! Finn, this girl you're trying to impress, tell me about her. She likes the life. She likes the life, eh? And back into that power pose. We'll find one that hates it. Look at him. That's what he did. Now he's chairman of the board. Oh. Go on. Hurry up. And finish him with another command. But see the way that Arthur's approach was very aggressive and assertive? Has its place in the world? Of course it does. Not used enough, in my opinion. Tommy's approach, you know, the mental. It's up, for you. It's up to you guys to decipher which one is going to work best in every scenario. Okay, and now we move on to our final scene here, guys. Any women watching? Because I know I'm getting a few women watching these body language videos now. And you've asked me a few times what should women do in terms of kind of alpha female body language, if you would, or dominant female body language. Just, just watch Polly Gray. Honest to God, I don't think there's ever been a female character that's been cast that I've been more favourable of when it comes to just their persona and body language and stuff like that. Like it's so believable. Like, you probably wouldn't mess with her. Whereas, for example, Captain Marvel. You know, if somebody said to me, you know, what do you think of Captain Marvel? Is she intimidating? Do you believe that she's, like, this powerful superhero? Hell no. You know, it doesn't really convince me. Gal Gadot, no, doesn't really convince me. Doesn't do anything for me. You know, in the latest film, I haven't watched it, but I watched a highlight video where she's doing, like, as Wonder Woman, she does, like, this kick and then kind of leans back like some female pop star and like her hair kind of flicks up in the air. It's just, it's just, that sort of shit is so stupid. Like that that actually makes feminism weaker. It makes it worse. 
Polly Gray, just any women that want to know how to have that dominant, assertive female body language, please just watch Polly Gray and do everything that she does. Hello, Mom. This is Gina. Gina Gray. The captain married us on board. Yeah. Oh. Here he comes, okay, the exaggerated steps. Let's let's watch this. Let's let's watch this play out. Michael. So okay, so number one, he's the loudest guy in the street. He's already got the biggest voice. Everybody's looking at him, he makes himself known. And then we have the wide stance here as as well. He's not afraid to be seen, okay? Sorry guys, I slipped off my armchair there. <laughs> he's got the um or should I say armrest? I'm not exactly sat in an armchair doing this, am I? But he's got the wide arms here. He's taking up as much space as possible. He's got the loudest voice. This is textbook, aggressive, dominant, assertive body language. This is this is fantastic. Hello, love. That, that's something that only British people will really understand, you know? Saying something like, hello, love, and looking at her straight in the eye. It's kind of like... You know she doesn't like you, but you're just gonna push it out there. You're gonna introduce yourself. You know she. You know he's not gonna introduce you to her, except you know, that sort of thing. So you you kind of push the boundaries a little bit more. It's a little bit cheeky. It's very British. He does it again in the minute. It's kind of it's kind of being nice, but being being bolshy at the same time. Let me try and think of another word because I don't know if you guys know what bolshy means if you're from different parts of the world. Um, you're kind of being nice to somebody. And giving them a compliment, which you'll do later, but at the same time, it's a backhanded compliment. Like, it's actually a negative. You're actually trying to cause trouble and stir the shit. And he does this really, really well with his um, with his aggression. Welcome to Birmingham, I. That was another power pose there, as we can see. There, okay, power pose. Kind of pulled his coat to the side, hands on the hips. He's taking up a ton of space. Very aggressive pose. When your hands are on your hips, it, like I said earlier, it shows aggression and dominance. Well, where you going? Okay, so we can see here he's trying to get out of the scenario. Arthur actually steps right in front of him, holds eye contact, creates this face off. He's got the arms wide, okay? If, if this was in the animal kingdom, this would be textbook. Um, this would be textbook aggression. You know, an animal trying to make their feathers look bigger, you know, getting up on their back legs like bears do. Maybe a peacock fluffing their feathers out as wide as possible to look more menacing and bigger. You know, there's multiple different things. I think birds do it too. They put their wings as wide as possible when they go at each other. It's just like an intimidation tactic. That's what he's doing here. And he's putting Michael on the back foot. And as we can see, I would say Arthur is slightly leaning forwards, and I would say Michael is slightly leaning backwards here, and that's the dynamic that is created. I know, right? Huh? Introduce me at least. Excuse Look me. at this. That's the, that kind of jokey thing that I showed you guys earlier as well. He, he's going to do another one later. It will really make sense when I show you the next one. Look at this. This is it, Gina. This is my fucking people. I don't think that's too good there from Arthur, putting the hands like that. I think he should have left them by his side. I think he felt uncomfortable. But Tommy does this, but, you know, it suits Tommy. Tommy does it in a different manner. It's more relaxed. But for Arthur, I don't think he looks too comfortable in that pose. Now, Mum. Imagine getting in your mum's face like that. What the fuck is that about? See, the Midland Hotel is Tommy's little kingdom. Where all the porters keep an eye. Where all the telephone exchange girls are reporting on my calls. Yeah, well, what don't you think of it, Lord? Okay, so Arthur's let Michael have his little moment there. He was strutting around. He had his arms wide. He was, you know, displaying his aggression. And Arthur wants to take it back now, okay? He's had enough. Watch this. Like, uh, quarantine, Michael, eh? Okay, so he circled around him almost like a shark. He was, he's doing that thing again I showed you guys with the big steps. He's taking up as much space as possible. That's what he's doing. He's asserting the dominance over the environment, over the area. It's an ape move. And then he moves in with the proper aggression. Boy, well, treats you like a fucking dog. 
okay, so he said something horrible about him. You know, he's referring to him as a dog. He's got really close. He's holding the strong eye contact. And he's, you know, he's a matter of centimeters away from Michael. He's moved in. He's been the aggressor here. And he's uh, kind of put this to Michael. Smelly one. Stinking one. Until we know you're clean. Hmm? It's one thing that Arthur and Ragnar Lothbrook do. They over-exaggerate certain words, like when he said stinky one. There's no need to say it like that. Him and uh, Ragnar do the same thing, like, who wants to be king? They over-exaggerate certain words. It's done in, a, in, a, in an aggressive manner, and it does assert dominance because it shows that you're deadly serious. Whereas Tommy, like I said, has a completely different approach where he's a lot more relaxed he will kind of speak in the same tone the entire way through. He will let his senses go down at the end, you know, as if they're like confirmations like I did there. Completely different styles, but they still get to the kind of end goal. It just depends what you're looking for. Fuck you, Arthur. Mm. There's a little smirk again. You know, that's, that, that is such a good weapon. You know, anybody who smirks like that is, what it shows is that you're clearly confident in your abilities or you're not taking this person seriously. You know, you see it in a lot of boxing face-offs. I remember when McGregor was in Mayweather's face and Mayweather was just smirking, you know, because he was just that confident. It shows that, you know, you don't bother me. I know I'm going to win this. It's, it's a very powerful move. I think it's very underrated. Stand aside, Arthur. No, Paul. Okay, so she said there, stand aside, Arthur. He said, no, Paul. Okay, he stayed right in his face. The reason being, he wants to win this eye contact. He wants to win this face off. That's something a lot more guys should do is wait for the other guy to back down. As much as you might be stood here in this scenario thinking, shit, this is about to go off. Most of the time, the other person will walk away. It's the same with women. If you hold eye contact, I'm not saying be this aggressive with women, but if you do hold their eye contact and they continue looking at you for like three, four seconds and you think, shit, this is getting really awkward, just wait, they'll look away first, I guarantee it. And there, that's all he wanted, because now that Polly speaks to him, he's willing to walk away. Come on, baby. Forget about it. Go and phone Tommy. Tell him. Polly says. See, his entire demeanor has changed now, okay? He won the interaction. He got what he wanted. He got the upper hand. He's the more dominant man. He's, if you would, like I've said to you guys before, death at the alpha male, but in body language, it's still true to, true, true to form because it's, you know, very linked to the animal kingdom, which is, you know, they're not going to have outlier males in the animal kingdom. But that's the end of it, guys. That's all of the clips that I wanted to show you. I hope you've learned something new about there's not one size kind of fits all when it comes to body language. There are, defi there are definitely different variants that you can do. You can combine styles. There's, there's more than one way to skin a cat, as I said. That's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll speak to you all soon.